Hi, my name is Mike Aben, and welcome to my KSP campaign. In the previous episode, we just finished getting the Karine 1 back to Kerbin Station here in low Kerbin orbit. You can also see that we also have the Karine 2 here, and we're going to be working a little bit with both of those two vessels. But our first mission is going to be getting the Karine 1 out to uh, the moon, where there is a lander in a polar orbit about the moon that we are going to have to rendezvous with. So uh, this is going to take a little bit of planning to rendezvous with a something in a polar orbit without having to do some major plane changes when we get out there. So I'm going to sort of start to plan this out right now. So the first thing I'm doing is just setting up my normal rendezvous to get out to the moon. And uh, the goal here is simply to hit the moon smack dab in the middle. I'm either going to have to go to the north or to the south, obviously, but uh, I'll figure that out later. But what I want to get uh, figured out right now is what is the angle that I'm going to be coming into the moon at. And I'm getting in there pretty close. Yeah, I think that that, that looks good to me. Okay, so let's rotate this a little bit. So we're looking right down on the orbit that I want to eventually get into. So that low polar orbit, that is the Kegel 2. That's my lander I want to rendezvous with. And of course the purple line is my trajectory coming in. The big question is, is this showing the position of things for when I get out there? Or is this showing the position of things as they exist right now? Because that determines whether I need to factor in travel time. I'm going to go with the assumption that this is actually showing what the situation will be when I get to the moon. That's what I'm going to assume. Now, we'll see if I'm right a little bit later in this particular video, but what I'm looking at is the angle between the orbit I want to get into, and by the way, that orbit, as the moon goes around Kerbin, is going to rotate in a clockwise direction. I know that feels backwards, but it's, well, it's all a relative thing. You'll just have to trust me, and I need the angle. That feels there like 90 degrees. So that means this angle here, which is what I'm interested in, I think that's pretty close to 45 degrees. So I'm going to pause here and do some uh, some configurating. Uh, how long is it going to take for that orbit to rotate 45 degrees? Well, thankfully, that's not too hard. The orbital period of the moon is 6 days, 2 hours, and 36 minutes. And 45 degrees is about 1 eighth of a circle. So if I take that orbital period and divide by 8, I come out with 4 hours and 50 minutes. In 4 hours and 50 minutes, uh, that orbit should be pretty much in line with my trajectory going in. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up alarm clock here. I'm going to set the alarm to be 4 hours. Well, 4 hours and 10. I'll leave that 10 minutes in there. That'll be a 40-minute head start in case, uh, you know, my estimating of 45 degrees is a bit long. And then we will revisit this and uh, actually plan and do our transfer out to the moon. In the meantime, we do have some work to do here back at the station, and I got a partner out. He's my new level two engineer, and uh, he's going to do a little bit of work on the Karayan one because it's a little bit bumped and bruised. Uh, I think it's showing its age perhaps a little bit as well. Uh, he's got to fix up the main reaction wheels. Uh, they're broken, so he's got to fix those. Um, yeah, but thankfully, being a level 2 engineer, he now has the skill to be able to do that. Uh, the Karayan also lost uh, a few of its batteries. We're going to fix those. It also lost a couple of solar panels. So we'll replace those empty spaces. We'll put some uh, blank solar panels in that spot. Thankfully, the uh, station has these types of supplies in plenty. So uh, no need for any special equipment being sent up or anything like that. We can do all these repairs in space. So really, nothing lost out of all that. And while Bartner's doing all of these things, why don't we talk about uh, the Karayan 2's mission. Uh, we're going to be sending it out on its way as well, and we're sending it out to Minmus. Uh, what we have in Minmus is a Kerbal who is stuck on the surface of Miss Minmus along with her command pod. And uh, we need to get her and the command pod back to Kerbin. So that will be an interesting mission, I think. And uh, we'll be sending the Korion 2 out to handle that one. 
Unfortunately, Crying 2 right now does not have a crew, so before we're able to send the off, we are going to have to get a fresh set of Kerbals. Well, as you'll see in just a little bit, maybe perhaps not so fresh set of Kerbals out to the out to the station so that they can, they can get their way out towards Minmus. But in the meantime, Bartner has finished his work, and we are now a few hours into the future, and we can uh, get ready to do our transfer out to the moon. So we just re setting this up again again just smack dab into the moon there we go and you can see there the angle is really small but rather than getting into measuring angles I'm just going to pop ahead in orbit oop that kind of messed that up I'll have to <laughs> get that back just with some timing there we go get that back oh up to I think burn a little bit more prograde nope retrograde there we go. Okay, so you can see now the angle has gotten smaller, so we'll pop ahead another orbit, and we'll fix that. And after getting it ahead a couple of orbits, I ended up with this uh, burn here that looks like it's going to be, well, definitely close enough. And that is going to be an hour and 23 minutes away. You can see I'm still on the station, so uh, once I leave the station, uh, I'll have to reset this node up again. But that's okay. This is just for, to get the timing right. So after just time warping a couple of more orbits, the Karayan was ready to go, except we have one more small task to perform. Now, Carol and Tamley, who are two-thirds of the crew for this mission, are already aboard the Karayan 1. And on EVA here, we have Bill, and hanging on to the station, we have Bartner, who is on backpack duty. Because inside his inventory here, we have a 1.25 meter docking port. So what we're going to do is we're going to replace the 0.625 meter Docatron Jr. with this bigger one. And oh shoot, that adapter won't fit in to there. The volume is too big. Okay, so uh, you know one of the things I have issues with is dropping. I can't seem to drop things. I don't know why. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stick it on there where it doesn't stick. But that gives me room to get the adapter over there. And then we'll put on the docking port. No, not on Bill's head. And right. There we go. That'll do. And with that accomplished, we'll get Bill. Well, we'll back away a bit here first. And then we'll get Bill aboard the Karayan. We'll get Bartner back inside the station. And then we're ready to get out of here. Yeah, the reason I had to do that was because the Kegel 2, my lander that we're going to be rendezvousing with, uh, does not have has a 1.25 meter docking port, not the 0.625 meter Docatron Jr. So we had to do a little bit of docking port adjustment. In fact, I think inevitably I will get rid of the 0.625 meter Docatron on the Karayan altogether so that I'm working with nothing but the 1.25 meter docking ports. But for now, our burn here is just about complete. All right, boom, that ought to do it. And I'm going to have to do a correction burn, and that correction burn is either going to have to be towards the north or towards the south. And you want to get this right, because if you get this wrong, you will end up being 180 degrees out on your relative inclination with your target. So uh, what I'm just going to do here is just time warp a little bit and watch the Kegel 2. And I can see here that it is definitely going towards the south, so I need to set up a correction to go towards the south, which uh, was only about an hour into the future, so we're just finishing that off now. And again, I want to get my periapsis to match up and just touch the orbit that I'm aiming for. There, about 10 kilometer, 12, there. The Kegel 2 is in an altitude of 12 kilometers, so that ought to do it. And in two and a half hours, which we'll see a little bit later in this video, we will be at the moon and we'll see how this all worked out. But for now, the Karayan 2 is in need of a crew. Here we are inside the Kuryus, on our way once again to rendezvousing with Kerbin Station. And you are watching this through the eyes of Svetlana. And I know Svetlana actually has only been on the ground for a couple of days, but I'm sending her back up again as the pilot, the Kuryus 2, once again. And to her left here is Chrissy. 
and it gets even worse to her right is Glafia. And Chrissy and Glafia are both just freshly back from their 45 day journey outside of Kerbin's sphere of influence. Yeah, they just were on the ground yesterday as far as the game is concerned. In the last episode, I did much the same thing with Rodbart, um, sending him back up after only having one day rest. And uh, so and I mentioned at the time that um, I don't really like doing that, and here I am doing it, well, three more times. But, uh, well, all three of these uh, Kerbinauts are going to be going up a level with this mission. Uh, that's the thing. Now, Svetlana Svetlana's act wasn't in space for all that long. I should have actually not brought her down in the first place. I kind of regretted that after bringing her down. But uh, her orbit of Minmus would actually put her at level 2. And Chrissy and Glafia, who are both at level 2, would go to level 3. Uh, with uh, Chrissy is just barely almost at level 3. And an orbit of Minmus will put her over the top. And Glafia, the plan is to have her land and perform the rescue part. Uh, I need an engineer on the surface in order to do what it is that I want to do. So, uh, yeah, that will put her to level 3 as well. I couldn't resist the leveling up, so that's that's what I did. The Curries here is actually coming up with a bit of a present. Uh, in Glafia's inventory are a pair of deployable solar panels that I put into the build after the Karayan 2 lost its solar panels uh, a few episodes ago during an arrow-breaking maneuver. And then I realized that the uh, nuclear engines are actually generating electricity. I didn't know that at first, but I know that now. In fact, they're generating ample amounts of electricity. This thing doesn't need solar panels. So then the plan was to put them onto the Karayan 1 uh, because it lost its solar panels during arrow breaking as well. But now, well, I'm putting them back onto the Kar or Karayan 2 again um, because I figured, you know what this thing needs is Depending on just one source of electrical generation probably isn't the best idea, so having some backup solar panels is probably a good idea anyway. And I didn't put them on the Karayan 1. Well, one reason is I wanted to send it on its way, but another reason is is because, well, uh, uh, this thing now has this lab module on it. In the lab module, you can put science in it. There's science in there right now. And now I'm going to be putting in a, a scientist so it can begin generating science for me again. And I would love to do the same thing with the Karayan 1. Uh, but that's going to require some surgery. <laughs> so I'm thinking when the Karayan 1 is back from its mission around the moon that I might see if I can uh, do some module Swapping. That's a, a pretty ambitious thing, more ambitious than what I've done as far as building with uh, Kerbal Inventory System, but uh, we'll, we'll see how it goes. And if it works, it's going to need electricity to run the lab module, and a pair of solar panels is no way going to be enough. Uh, it, we, we're going to need a pair of Gigantors, I think, in order to get that to work. So that's why I got different plans for the crown, I guess, is the idea here. Anyway, with this all accomplished, uh, you know, I could be starting to send this guy on its way, but I want to see how the insertion around the moon went first. Okay, there's our alarm, warning us of the SOI change in about a minute. Let's go into map view here. Can't really tell if it's working well or not from here, so we'll just time warp until we get, whoa! Okay, what? Oh, now it's back again. Oh, oh, Kerbal Space Program's a little bit confused. Can't decide whether we're in or out. Let's just time warp to it anyway. Okay, and there. Whoa. Okay, we're under 10 seconds. There we go, five seconds to go. We'll just wait to cross the sphere of influence. Should be, oh, there it goes. A little little shake as we cross shockwave. And let's see how this looks. Oh, oh, from here it looks pretty nice. Oh, let's take a look at this from the moon's perspective. Let's focus on the moon. And oh my god, look at that! We are almost perfectly just like it was predicted from low carbon orbit. So there we go. So what you see. 
as you're planning your maneuver is what you get when you get there. This is awesome. I really wasn't sure how this would turn out, and uh, I am deluxely pleased with this. And I really do have to thank a viewer, uh, John Nowak. <laughs> we had uh, some conversations going back and forth as uh, he was actually doing much the same sort of things, and uh, he was doing it before I was doing it, so I got to learn from his experiences. So I want to thank him very much for sharing. And it was actually through our conversation that I began to realize that uh, it must be showing it as it is when you get there, not at the time you're planning the maneuver. So that's great. So we're going to burn a little bit normally, a little bit anti normal, in fact, just to bring our trajectory over just a little bit. And then it's time to plan our capture and rendezvous. Yeah, I'm just looking at my relative inclination with my target. It's only one and a quarter degree. That's fantastic. So I can just take care of that as I perform the rendezvous. If the inclination change was fairly large, you definitely don't want to do that. But I'll, I'll deal with that in another video at another time. Here what I'm doing is, a, is just bringing down my orbit and I'm watching my close encounter indicators. And they just blew by each other, but I want to get it so that I do just a single orbit and then perform the rendezvous. That's not for efficiency in terms of fuel. That's just efficiency in terms of time. No, I can't go down. That's it. Bringing it down anymore will crash into the moon. So we will just tweak this until we have... An, as close an encounter as I can get, but I can already see that that burn is going to be a little more than an hour and a quarter away, so that'll give me uh, some time to get out to Karayan 2 and uh, sort of figure out if I can do the same thing about Minmus. So just a quick reminder, the mission for the Karayan 2 will be to rendezvous around Minmus Station, which is in a polar orbit around Minmus, so it's going to have to perform much the same trick that the Karayan 1 just performed. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to do the same thing. We're going to set up a, a burn and try to hit Minmus right in the middle. The only difference is this time is this, this is going to require um, a correction burn mid-course because of Minmus's inclined orbit and that Kerbin Station is in an equatorial orbit so but that just requires a little bit more playing around than it does with the moon and then we ooh, ooh, well this looks a little bit more ugly there's the space station it's in a polar orbit Ugh. okay let's let's turn this so that uh, we're a little bit more edge on here so I can get what this angle is. And I gotta remember too, Minmus is much more, goes much more slowly around Kerbin than the moon does. So looking at that angle there, there's the angle I want. Remember that the orbit's gonna rotate clockwise. And that looks a lot like, I don't know, about a third of the way around the circle. I think so. I think it's around 120 degrees that it's going to have to rotate. And Minmus, the orbital period of Minmus around Kerbin is 49 days, 5 hours, and 15 minutes. And if I divide that by 3, that's 16 days, 3 hours, and 45 minutes. So I could, okay, so that's a long way. I'm going to have to wait over 16 days. Well, let's, uh, let's get alarm clock here. I'm going to add an alarm for 15 days. Or, on second thought, I could just say, screw it. Yeah, I'm not going to wait that long. <laughs> I, mean, really, I just don't want these guys sitting around that long doing nothing. So we are burning for Minmus right now. And we'll deal with the inclination when we get out there, that inclination difference. Um, you know, by my estimation, looking at that angle, looks like we're going to have to make a 60 degree inclination change. I think that'll be a useful exercise. Um, you know, you just saw me do an insertion into a very specific polar orbit about the moon where I got the inclination difference to be very small. Now you're going to get to see it when the inclination is 
very large, the inclination difference is very large and we're gonna have to make a correction. But you know, in this, it's got this teeny tiny little gravity well. I don't think it's actually gonna be all that expensive. So, but we're gonna find that out when we get out there and that's not going to be in this particular episode remember it's going to take me about a week just to get out the Minmus and in fact I think I'm going to be drawing this particular episode to its conclusion so next episode we'll begin by getting out to the moon and we'll do that rendezvous and we will uh, do the landing and then we'll get back to these guys uh, in an episode in the near future as well talk about inclination changes but in the meantime I thank you for watching and I hope to see you again next time.